Welcome to Excel Campus. My name is John and this is the first video in a series on solutions to our data cleansing challenge. So in a previous video, I presented this challenge, which was to convert this text in column C into an actual time value like we have here in column D. And we had a ton of responses come in on both the blog post and YouTube channel. So first of all, thank you if you contributed a solution. There was a lot of great ones and I'm going to do just a few videos here with some of the most popular and interesting solutions. In this first video, we're going to cover some formula-based solutions uh, using some text functions. But I'll also have additional videos with other formula-based solutions as well as Power Query and even VBA macros. And of course, I will also make this file available for download, and I'll put a link to that in the description below this video. So the first solution we'll look at uses formulas and some text functions. And I actually provided this solution in the original file, so you might have seen this one already, but I did want to walk through and explain how it works. And the overall concept here is that we're going to extract the hours, minutes, and seconds from our text over here. So that's what the formulas are doing in each of these columns, and then combine it back using the time function to create that time value. So let's take a look at how this works. I'm going to go through this walk through sheet here and recreate the formula. So this is our original data set. The first thing we're going to do is add a column for the hour. And I am using an Excel table, so this will automatically extend our table. If you're not familiar with tables yet, I have a whole nother video that explains these in more detail and how to get started with this awesome tool in Excel. So to extract the hour, we just want to really extract the hour, the numeric value here, which is 10 in this case, two down here, and wherever we have hours, we want to extract that. Uh, for this, we can use the mid function. We could also use the left function here because the hour is always going to be the starting point. However, we're going to use the mid and then we'll reuse that in the other formulas. So we'll just start with that portion of the formula. I'll just start typing mid here and tab into this. And as you can see here, this returns the characters from the middle of a text string. And we give it a starting position and a length. So tabbing into that, the text that we want to evaluate is in cell C2 here. So we'll just select cell C2. I'm going to type a comma. And then for the start number here, we want to start at the first character. So we're going to specify a one here. That'll be the first character within this string of text uh, within cell C2. And then the number of characters, if I hit a comma here, we don't actually know that for sure. Uh, we could put a two here and uh, that would give us, if we do that, I'll just close the parentheses, that'll be two characters. So really it's going to start here at the uh, first character and then return the first two characters. So in this case, it'll work. That'll give us a 10. However, in the other cells, it still returns a number even though this is not ours. You can see we get 25 here, we get two here, this actually be a two and a space that's being returned there for their first two characters. So we don't actually want this all the way down, we only want this number if this cell contains ours. So in order to get that, we're going to use the search function. So I'll jump back, I'm gonna hit F2 to edit this cell again. So instead of uh, specifying a two here, I'm going to delete that. And we're going to use the search function here. You can use the search or the find function. They both basically do the same thing. So I'll start typing search. Uh, this returns the number of the character at which a specific character text string is first found. Uh, reading right to left, you can't see that. You also can't see, and let me see if I can move this screen to up here. Here we go. You can also see that this is not case sensitive. So the search function is not case sensitive. The find function is case sensitive. So we'll use search here and we'll tab into that. Now the text that we want to find is the word hour. So we can wrap that in quotation marks. We can just type hour, something like this, wrapped in quotes. Or the other thing we can do is uh, just specify a cell that contains that phrase. And that's what I did in my original example. So I'll go ahead and do that. So instead of this, I'm just going to select cell D1 because that contains the word hour. I'm also gonna hit F4 on the keyboard twice to uh, create an absolute row reference here, mixed reference for the absolute row reference. Now we're going to type a comma 
and we want to search or find the word hour within this text here, cell C2. So we'll select cell C2. We can also optionally uh, specify a starting number. However, we don't need that in this case. So we'll just go ahead and close the parentheses there to close our search function. So let's go ahead and hit enter at this point, see what happens, and I'll explain some modifications we're going to need. So you can see now that we do have uh, values returned here. We have 10 space H, two space H, uh, four space H, and so on. So it has found the hours and it's only returning those. If it doesn't find hour, it's returning and air. Now we don't need the space H here, so we need to get rid of that. So I'll hit F2 to jump into this again. And again, we can see this, and one little trick here is if we just select the entire search function, including the closing parenthesis there, we can hit F9 on the keyboard to evaluate that. And that's returning a four. So that's telling us that it's finding the uh, hour, the word hour here at the fourth character. So one, two, there's a space there, and then H is the fourth character. So that's where the word hour starts, the fourth character. So that's the number of characters it's returning. And we wanna subtract two from that because we always, you can see the pattern here, we always wanna be two characters in front of that. Um, uh, now one other important note here is if you do use that F9 trick, at this point right now, hit escape on the keyboard so you don't save those changes. Uh, just hit escape there, and then we can hit F2 to jump back in here and edit the formula. And now at the end of our search function, we're going to put a minus two. So just add a minus two there. So now the number of characters, if we click here to uh, select the screen tip, the number of characters will be wherever it finds hour and then minus two. So that looks good. We'll go ahead and hit enter there. And now we can see we get the proper number of hours where hours do exist in the time text. So the next thing I did was wrap this in the value function, and that will just return a number instead of text. This is not actually a required step, but if you were using these numbers for something else, maybe in a pivot table or something like that, you'd wanna have numbers here and not text. And the mid function does return text. So I'm just going to wrap this in value, and again, we'll hit enter, and that's really going to produce the same results. Nothing's really changed here. However, you can see the numbers are now aligned to the right, and that lets you know that these are numbers and not text. And then finally, we need to handle the errors. So anytime the search function does not find uh, what it's looking for, so again, this search function here is looking for the word hour. If it does not find that within the text over here that it's searching in, it returns an error. So we need to wrap this with an if error function. So I'll just go up to our first cell here, again, F2 to edit it. And here we'll just type if error and tab into that. And of course, if error has two arguments, the first is the value, which is this entire value here. And then at the end of that, we can put a comma and the value we want to return if there is an error. So in this case, I'm gonna type a zero. We can just return a zero if there's an error. And then we'll close the parentheses and hit enter. And now we can see we have uh, no errors in this column. And another uh, quick way to check that is just hit the filter drop down menu here. You can see you just have numbers here in the list box, no errors at the bottom. So everything looks good there. Of course, you can also spot check these to make sure all the hours are correct. It's turn, returning the correct number there where we do have hours. And if we don't have hours in the text, it returns a zero. So next we'll extract the minutes. I'll just type a minute here. This will be singular so we can use this value and uh, work with both minutes where it says minutes or minute. And then we can also just copy our formula across. Now before we do that, we're going to wanna to anchor down this reference to cell C2 or column C. So just uh, click in there, hit F4 on the keyboard once, twice, three times to just anchor uh, that column reference. Do the same here, F4 three times, and then we'll go ahead and hit enter. And now we can just copy this over to the right. So I hit Control C, Control V, and we just need to modify it. So you can see it's returning a zero, should be returning a 39. So we'll hit F2 to edit it. 
the first thing we need to do is change the mid function. So we, uh, for the hours, we specify the start number as one because the hours are always going to be at the beginning of our text string. However, in this case, we want to find the actual start number for that word minute. So we're going to delete this and delete the comma as well. And for the start number, we'll use the search function here. So that'll find where the word hour is, go back two characters, I'm sorry, where the word minute is, and go back two characters, and uh, then find that. And then after that, the number of characters that we want to return, we'll add a comma here, uh, we want to return uh, two characters. So we'll put a two right there. We'll go ahead and hit enter and see what that does. Now, as you can see here, we're getting a nine instead of a 39, same down here, nine instead of 59. And that's because we actually need to go back three characters. So instead of a minus two here, we do need a minus three. So we'll uh, do minus three there. We'll go ahead and hit enter. Now that works, we can see we have 39, 59, uh, one minute here. There is one kind of edge case here where it doesn't work. And that's where the minutes are the, uh, where the text starts with minutes like it does here, but when the, we just have a single digit for the value. So I'll just modify this one so I don't have to go find one. Instead of 13 minutes, we'll make that three minutes and hit enter. And you can see now that we have a zero returned here instead of a three. And that happens if we go and evaluate this and we evaluate our search function, uh, we can click right here for our start number. That'll select everything right here. If we hit F9 to evaluate that, we get a, a zero there. So it's finding minutes and then it's going back three characters, but uh, there's really only two characters it can go back. So it returns a zero and the mid function cannot start with a zero. The start number cannot be zero. It needs to be one. Uh, so therefore this is actually returning an error and the if error function is returning that zero zero. So I'm going to hit escape so I don't keep that. And one thing we can do is add the max function. So we could also add an if statement in here. Instead of an if, we can add a max function because we know that we want to have a maximum number of one. If it's zero, if this uh, returns a zero here, then we want to return a one instead. So we'll add the max function here, max, open the parentheses there. We do have our entire search function here and then we'll add a comma, so if, uh, max of that or one, and then close the parentheses. So if our search function returns something over uh, zero, or over one, I should say, then it's going to return that number. Otherwise, it's going to return a one. So that allows us to account for that error. So I'll go ahead and hit enter now, and we can see we now have three minutes here. We still have 12 minutes here. Of course, that formula is applied to all the cells in the column, so everything now should be calculating correctly. Also change this back to uh, 13 minutes here in case we want to tie it out later. That was our original, and we still get the correct result right here. So next we'll do seconds, and this one's very easy. I'll just type second up here, and we really just need to copy and paste this formula to that column. So control C, right arrow, control V, and we'll have our results here. We don't need to make any modifications to the formula. It's the exact same formula for both of those, and now we have our results. And you can really use the same formula for all three columns. I just wanted to show how the formula changed there from what we started with, with extracting hours, and then having to modify it a bit for minutes and seconds. But you could really do uh, that formula in all three columns. And then finally, we just want to uh, get the time value. So we're going to use the time function for this, and we'll do equals right here, start typing the word time, and time is going to convert hours, minutes, and seconds given as a number to an Excel uh, serial number there. It says Excel, Excel serial number forwarded, formatted with a time format. So that's what time does. So we can tab into that. So we're going to use, uh, for hour, we're just going to reference this cell, D2, type a comma for a minute, uh, that's column E, and then comma for second, column F. And so that's all we need for time. Similar to the date function, it's just going to give us a time. We'll hit enter, and that will show us our time value. And then finally, as I mentioned in the challenge video, we changed the formatting on this. So it's currently that time format. To format all the cells in the column here, I'm gonna hit control space bar to select the entire column. Now we can right click anywhere, choose format cells. Keyboard shortcut is control one. It'll bring up the format cells window. 
and within the custom category over here, we're gonna choose a time uh, like this, or I'm sorry, a format with this, hours, minutes, and seconds. It does not include the AM and PM. You can see a preview right up here, and then we'll go ahead and hit OK. So that's more of a duration, since these uh, times are durations, the, the, number, the amount of time that an employee spent in the training system. Uh, we'll want to show those like this, that look like more of a duration of time. So that was definitely a bit of a longer video, but hopefully you learned a lot of new functions there. Uh, we looked at a few different text functions like mid and search. Also learned about the max function, the value function, and if error. So definitely packed with a lot of training there, as well as the time function. Of course, if you have any questions or suggestions, please leave a comment below this video. I just want to say a big thanks again for everyone that contributed to solutions. In the next video, we'll look at another solution with some product. And then in the future, we'll also have solution videos on Power Query and VBA macros and UDFs. So thanks again for watching and I'll see you in the next video. If you enjoyed that video, there are a few simple things you can do to help me out. If you're watching this video on YouTube, click the like button below the video and leave a comment with any questions or feedback. And please don't forget to subscribe to my free email newsletter to get more tips and tricks that will help you learn Excel. Thanks again for watching and I'll see you soon.